Good morning, good morning, my precious brothers and sisters in the Lord. How are you guys doing? This is Pastor Sean Pinn again with another morning prayer broadcast. We are talking this entire week. We have been teaching on understanding God's perfect will and the different ways and the strategies and techniques that God uses to guide you into his perfect will. And on this morning, we are talking about God's still small voice reveals his perfect will. God's still small voice reveals his perfect will. I've been changed. I've been changed. I've been healed. Healed. I've been set free. Sing it, church. Free. I've been delivered. Sing it. Delivered. I found joy. I found joy. I found his peace. Peace. My God, I tapped into his grace. Grace. And favor. And favor. I've been changed. I've been changed. I've been healed. I've been set free, free, I've been delivered, delivered, my God, I found joy, I found your peace, peace, I found your grace, Lord, grace, my God, and favor, and favor, sing, I won't go back, sing, I won't go back, I can't go back, the way it used to be since your presence came and changed me I won't go back I won't go back since your presence came and changed me I won't go back say I won't go back I can't go back to the way it used to be Since your presence came and changed me Never going back, sing! Never going back I'm never going back Never going back To the way it was Never, never going back I'm never going back Sing to the Lord, never going back to the way. I'm never, I'm never sick, never going back. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray over your children. I pray over the viewing audience, the listening audience on this morning. Speak to your people. God, as we are about to go into the word of God, minister to your people. God, increase their faith their revelation knowledge, their understanding on how you lead us into your perfect will. Strengthen, encourage, and uplift this morning. Give breakthroughs with your wisdom, your knowledge, and understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Someone say a good amen right there. Now listen on this morning, I'm talking about God's still small voice reveals his perfect will. I'm wanting to take you into the book of 1 Kings chapter 19. We know in chapter 18, Elijah had called fire down from heaven. And then what happened was Jezebel threatened Elijah that she was going to kill him and take his life. And this frightened Elijah and shook him up. So he ran and went on a 40 day, 40 day fast journey. Are you listening to me? So what happened is I'm going to take, I'm going to pick the story up in first Kings chapter 19 verses nine through 18. Listen. And he came there unto a cave and lodged there. So Elijah is staying by this cave. And then the Bible says, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah? Anytime God asks you, what are you doing here? That means you are someplace that you should not be. <laughs> but what happened was Elijah had gotten shaken up by Jezebel's threat. Man, you would have been afraid too if the government was after you to kill you. Come on, somebody. And so he ran and the Bible says, so the word of the Lord came to him and said, what doest thou here, Elijah? Verse 10, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts 
For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant and thrown down your altars and slain your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. You know, anytime we get into self-pity, you always feel like there's nobody else left but you. And we, we're about to see God's about to show him better. And he said, this is what God said to him, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break it in pieces. The rocks as well before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, watch this, a still small voice. My God, my God, the still small voice of the Holy Ghost. Have that ever happened to you where you just felt in your heart like just a, just a really faint voice? You, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't make this decision. Have you ever went against the still small voice and paid the price? Man, we are all guilty this morning. Both hands and both feet are up in the air right now. Come on. We are all guilty. And this is how you know it was, it was the still small voice of the Holy Ghost because you disobeyed, you know, some of you may call it your conscience, but it's the voice of the Holy Ghost speaking to you real gentle. Don't do it, don't do it. And you went ahead and did it and you suffered consequences. That's the still small voice of the Lord God. Are you listening to me? That's the still small voice of the Holy Ghost. And as we study our Bibles and grow in our prayer lives and fasting and waiting before God and spending time in worship with God and building up our relationship with God, the still small voice becomes stronger and stronger and we become more sensitive to it, I should say. We become more and more sensitive to the still small voice. Listen to this. So after the fire, the still small voice, listen to verse 13. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? But I want to focus on the first part of that verse. And it was so when Elijah heard it. That meant Elijah had trained himself. He had developed his relationship with the Lord so strong that he was able to hear very clearly the still small voice of the Holy Ghost. And I pray for everyone watching this broadcast that God would help you develop being very sensitive to the still small voice of the Holy Ghost. Now watch verse 14. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel, he said it again, have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away. Now watch God brings correction and instruction to Elijah, his servant who was very discouraged. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you come, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room, in your place. And so God was telling Elijah, I want you to go and anoint this young man, bring him with you into your ministry and groom him to help fulfill the call of God. You see, when, when the man of God faces discouragement, this is a strategy from the Holy Ghost. God brings somebody alongside that man of God to help hold his hands up. When Moses' hands grew weak, the Bible says Aaron and Hur stood next to Moses and helped hold his hands up. And as a result, they won the victory that day. Also, when the burden of the ministry became too great for Moses, God spoke to Moses and said, you know what? I'm going to have to take some of the anointing that's on you and put it on the 70 elders of the children of Israel that they may help you bear the burden of the people. But I want you to realize how all of this was revealed to Elijah. It came to him in the form of the still small voice of the Holy Ghost. So he said in verse 17, and it shall come to pass that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay. 
and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. So Elisha, Elijah, who became who later became Elisha's servant and carried on Elijah's ministry, mantle, and anointing, this man was a warrior. Listen to what the Bible says in verse 18. I love this. The still small voice is still speaking. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. So the still small voice had to let Elisha, Elijah the prophet know, you are not the only one, Elisha, Elijah. I've got 7,000 more prophets who have not bowed to Baal yet, who are still committed and who are still faithful to me. And my prayer for you this morning is that the Holy Ghost would teach you how to be much more sensitive to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, to listen to him, to obey him, to trust his promptings, to trust his leadings, to become much more grown up and develop in that area. And you will always be getting developed in that area. It's not like you're going to arrive. Hello? You know, that do you do come to a place in God where you become so convinced of that still small voice, just like you know the wife, just like you know the voice of your wife, or you know the, 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 the voice of your husband, or the voice of your children. You become to be so in tune with the Holy Ghost that when he speaks, there is, I mean, there's no doubt in your heart that the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Man, and God is teaching you so much. I want to sing this song with you. I won't go back. There's no way you can go back to how you used to operate before God give you all this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from his word. I won't go back. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be since your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. Sing. I won't go back. I can't go back. To the way it used to be Since your presence came and changed me Sing, I won't go back, sing it I won't go back, I can't go back To the way it used to be Since your presence came and changed me Never going back, sing Never going back I'm never going back I'm never, never going back to the way Never going back, sing Never going back I'm Come on and help me worship Him on this morning To the way it was never, sing Never going back I'm never going back Never going back to the way it was I won't go I won't go back I can't go back To the way it used to be Since your presence came and changed me I won't go back I won't go back I can't go back To the way it used to be Since your presence came and changed me Listen here, saints, I want to give you guys a chance to stand with us in this great ministry. As we are preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are reaching 235 nations with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the hope for the world. And we are asking you to stand with us. We need your help. We need you to support the work of God that we are doing. God is using you to help us be able to take this message of the Lord Jesus Christ around the whole world. The Apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God under salvation. Are you listening to me? This is the hope of the world. This is the message that saves souls that's on their way to a Christless hell. This is the message that heals sick bodies, subdues the devil. Are you listening to me? So we are asking you to support us. The information is on the screen. You can give through the Ministry Secured website, 
seanpender.net forward slash give. If you prefer to give through the ministry PayPal account, that information is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. If you prefer to mail in your donations, make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 117442, Carrollton, Texas 75011 7 Four, four, two. Listen here, saints. We appreciate you guys. We look for your comments underneath this video. Let us know what God is doing through this ministry in your lives. We love reading you guys' comments. You know me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy. We love you guys. We care deeply about you. We are here for you. We are standing with you. We are believing God for your miracle, for your breakthrough, for your supernatural turnaround. Are you listening to me? And remember to tune into tomorrow's broadcast as we continue and close out on tomorrow talking about understanding God's perfect will for your life. You don't want to miss that broadcast. And now I want you to turn your attention to these important announcements that I'm about to make. God bless you. Listen up now. Listen, I have three announcements to make to you on this morning. I will be coming to Invaders for Christ Family Center in Freeport, Bahamas. That's Sunday, November the 18th. I will be there 10 a.m. that morning to preach the word and 7 p.m. that night to preach the word of the living God. I will be at Invaders for Christ Family Center. That's with Bishop Clifton and Apostle Carolyn Cooper. My gosh, my mentors in the Lord. The address is 61C Frobisher Drive in Freeport, Bahamas. 61C Frobisher Drive in Freeport, Bahamas. For more information, you can call 242-352-4787. 242-352-4787. And listen, friends, you don't want to miss that meeting. And you don't want to drag in because there's going to be a full house and seating is limited. So you want to get there as early as possible to secure yourself a good seat. The power of the Holy Ghost is going to visit us at Invaders for Christ Family Center. Listen, if you know someone that's sick, infirm, diseased, that's believing God for healing, a, a healing in their body, please bring them to that meeting. You know someone who needs deliverance from drugs. They've just been burdened down and need a breakthrough in their marriage, in their personal walk with God, in their own personal life, dealing with issues and strongholds, need the devil rebuked off of them. You don't want to miss that meeting. I've experienced some of the strongest anointings in my life preaching for Bishop Clifton and Apostle Carolyn Cooper. So I'm inviting you to join me at Invaders for Christ Family Center, November the 18th, that's Sunday, November the 18th of this year, 2018. I will be there for two services, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. I'm looking to see you all there. Also, I will be back in Freeport of next year, 2019, March the 8th and the 9th, for a miracle crusade. God spoke to me at the end of 2017 and said, Son, I'm about to pour my spirit out. I'm about to raise up a new generation. I'm about to anoint a new generation. Fill your horn with oil and go back to Freeport, Bahamas and conduct special meetings. So I will be there March the 8th and the 9th. That's a Friday night at 7 p.m., a Saturday morning at 10 a.m., and a Saturday night at 7 p.m. I'm inviting you to be a part of that miracle crusade. Mighty things are going to happen. Freeport, get ready, get ready, get ready. God is about to pour his spirit out in a fresh way and confirm the word with signs, wonders, and miracles following the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're watching us through YouTube, click on that subscribe button. It's the red and white subscribe button at the bottom right of your screen and make sure your notifications are turned on. And every time we upload new videos, which we do every day, or go live, which we do every Sunday night, at Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, you will receive those notifications if you have subscribed to our channel and turn your notifications on. If you're watching us through Facebook, we invite you 
to join our Facebook group. It's called I Believe in Miracles. I Believe in Miracles. So send us a request to join our group and we'll be more than happy to let you in that group. We love you guys. God bless you. This is Pastor Sean and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy Pinder saying we love you. God bless you. And we look forward to being with you again tomorrow on another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you. Bye-bye.